If you're wondering why Jesus and Mary Magdalene and the whole twin flame journey is really coming to the surface right now, you'll want to stay tuned for this video. I also wanted to share that I have been guided by Jesus to share these activation codes with mostly the twin flame community. Now, if you've heard anything about Twin Flames, then you're most likely a part of the community. And what he shared with me is that I have the ability to awaken through my voice. And it's about me staying with the frequency that he's sharing with me in order for me to share with the collective. It is also important for us to start to wake up to our divinity and who we truly are. And so it will be coming more and more online, the Christ light within our DNA. So I have been guided to continue to provide these prophetic activations with you all at the affordable cost that I have listed. Um, until I leave for Europe, which is on the 24th. So if you guys would like to partake in that, now understand that the reason why it is so incredibly important that you clear the things in your seven chakras and clear the things that are stuck in your DNA from trauma, um, because especially as a group of us are going to anchor the codes from Isis and Magdalene, into the twin flame collective but also through the entire collective consciousness now when these activation codes hit you and you have a lot of trauma and stuckness in your chakras it does not feel good it will sometimes it can feel like getting hit with lightning because it's like this this um surge in your body and so it's really about being conscious and present and realizing that a lot of the Twin Flame Collective, I would say, it's probably about three groups. There's the group of Twin Flames that have already come together. Um, most of them have been together for quite some time, some, some over 10 years. They were anchoring in that consciousness and really activating the DNA. Then the next, um, I would say, group or collective of Twin Flames they have been meeting anywhere from four years to last year in person. Um, meeting through, you know, chance encounters and, and different things. And when they come together, they go through this, these stages. And so a lot of us have looked at these stages as runner chaser and we're looking through the paradigm or the the vision through victim dynamic. We're not seeing ourselves as one. We are seeing through the eyes of these different relationships or styles of relating that are dysfunctional. The twin flame um, blueprint has been brought to this planet in order to clear all of the levels of dysfunction that have become in encased in the collective um, love frequency is what they're saying to me and so you go through a purification process you come together and that's the activation phase and then the next phase normally there's one that that clings and one that runs but the one that runs isn't running because um, there's anything inherently wrong with the one that they're running from, it is all divinely guided. They have to stay away in order to allow for that purification process to happen within both twins. And there will be periods of time that will need to go through the separation and it's about how long it takes to get through clearing all seven of your seals, going through all of the trauma that we've had stored in all of our different centers, our, our chakras. 
And so you can think about this like when we get um, different terminal illnesses, we're going through a spiritual initiation. These are all different initiations. And so you can kind of look over the course of your life or just see what when you came together with your twin was activated or triggered to see exactly where you need to start working with mentors and guides and counselors on these specific specific things to clear um that is why there has been techniques such as um well there's too many to single anyone out so i'm not going to but there has been created techniques to easily clear trauma from the dna that has been brought online from star seeds and um i want to say parts of the whole that have been um very divinely guided to bring these technologies online. Now, I know that there's many of us on this twin flame journey that have experienced a, what I'd like to call a dark night of the soul life. And this is because of the hero's journey. You have to think about how everything is always spiraling. And we are in a process of unifying our masculine and feminine aspects. And so the quicker that you can come into union with your twin, and I don't mean on a physical level, I mean embodying them with inside of yourself, literally. It's this unification that happens within us. And this dancing of energy that goes up our spine and into our head that ignites this God consciousness within our DNA. And there is this radiance of golden light that shines from our solar plexus. And this radiance of light and frequency, it is it heals anyone that comes into contact with us, even in our frequency. Now, if you can remember um, the stories about Jesus being able to, how people just came into his presence and they were healed. This is because of this unification that had happened with inside of himself and a unification that eventually happened on the physical dimension with his twin flame, Mary Magdalene. Now, I know that the, the topic of Jesus and Mary Magdalene is a very con controversial subject. And this is because each and every one of us hold a deep and intimate connection with both of them. They have both been seated within our collective consciousness. And so it is okay for you to feel like you have an intimate and personal relationship that is actually, that actually puts you closer to God than you even have maybe conscious awareness of. As I said in one of my previous videos, Mary Magdalene also ascended into her light body when she left this physical plane of existence. Um, that's why she went into the cave and started her process of unifying herself with Mother Gaia and ascending and descending into her light body until she could go all the way into to her light body form. She merged with the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, and therefore we all have a deep um, connection with the Holy Spirit every time we ask for guidance we are guided by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is in everything so understand that it's perfectly natural that you all have a deep and personal relationship with Jesus and Mary Magdalene now what he has been showing me recently is 
visions of their life together. And this isn't coming from when I am remote viewing or it's my intuition because when I see through that perspective, I'm seeing from above or next to and I'm witnessing the experience. But the way I've been experiencing um, him and Mary Magdalene, I've been seeing and experiencing through her body. And I don't have answers to why this is. I don't know if it's because I was her or if in order for me to remember this and bring it forth um, is it's a teaching experience for me to go through. I don't know if we'll ever truly know, um, but what Jesus keeps telling me is that it's not helping anybody by me continuing to doubt it, so I'm allowing it. What I have seen um, for many years is this ceremony, and I thought it was me seeing future visions of me marrying um, someone, and what I finally saw was it was a vision from B Mary Magdalene and Jesus going through this hand fasting ceremony that his mother performed. Now, what I've gathered is that there was a reason why there wasn't allowed to be like a legal marriage and that it was imperative for Mary Magdalene to leave after Jesus's crucifixion. Now, what he showed me and what I experienced today was that, well, previously, what he had shown me was because people kept asking me about their intimate relationship. And he said that when it was time that I would see and know and as these visions started coming in more and more clearly as experiences, the first um, experience I had was seeing a man come through the door and raping Mary Magdalene and her calling in the presence of Lilith and allowing for demonic possession because, I mean, that's how demonic possession happens. We often aren't conscious of when we are allowing negative spirits and entities um, into us, but understand that there's always free will. And so even um, demonic energies, they still have to ask for our permission in order to enter. And yes, it's not from a conscious three-dimensional, we're shaking hands and signing contracts, but ultimately we're always asking. And so when you're screaming out in a desperation um, and an energy comes to offer assistance on whatever level um, that happens, we make agreements, especially in our, our desperation. Hence why there has been so much trauma and why when specific forces want to control mass population, they, um, <sighs> have big tragedies that happen within the collective that gets everyone's attention. So be mindful of this. Um, so when she took on this this energy of possession um it became her identity for a while it became her identity because it was the first time that she felt more i want to say more powerful but they're stopping me um it made her feel Yeah, I guess in that experience, her safety was taken. And so this possession made her feel 
um, safe after that without healing it. But because her and Jesus were and are twin flames, this means that the moment that this happened to her, he could feel it. And so although they didn't know each other in that lifetime yet, he could feel it. And because he had this knowing, and even though he wasn't, um, as he would say, ready yet for people to know, he started following that her soul song that she was singing in desperation for help. And that is why he came to her. That's how he knew to find her. And when he came to her, he cleared all of her seven seals. He removed the quote-unquote demons from her. And then after he removed the demons from her, he called her Mary Magdalene. And that awoken a, a knowing of who he was because it's not necessarily about him saying her name. It's about a vibration, a frequency. And we set it up in this way because when we go through the veils of illusion to come down to this three-dimensional reality, we have to set it up in a way that there's activation codes, there's breadcrumbs that we can follow on our path back to remembering the truth. And so that was her activation code that, that this, is, this is my person, I remember. And her initial feeling was to cling to him. And he taught her to love herself. He helped her emotionally heal from the things that she had experienced in her life. And he called her his from day one. But he was very clear in that he was not going to be another person that tried to take her innocence from her. Instead, he reawakened the innocence that she was born with and he allowed for her to naturally blossom into her fullest expression of who she is while under his care and and safekeeping and um when she was fully healed and able to make a choice from a space of centered in godness they had the hand fasting ceremony and he made sure that everything about their relationship was kept sacred so hence the reason why there wouldn't be a lot of talk about it now the apostles knew about their relationship and Peter, for one, was very jealous of their relationship, especially after Jesus' ascension. And that's why Peter often um, kind of just berated Mary and trying to get her to admit their relationship. But they'd all agreed upon it before the crucifixion, that it was going to be kept sacred and secret um, for Mary's protection. And also, there was just this, this, um, yeah, he's showing me that it was for her protection specifically, not that he wanted to ever keep her secret. And there, it's not like they, um, they walked together. People knew. And this, this union that they had come to within themselves and that light that naturally radiated from them. And that's how he knew she was ready as well as what he's telling me.
because that light is something that you can't deny. You can't hide it. And what he showed me today was there was um, there was I'm not exactly sure what I'm I've been experiencing today like what it all means but I saw them and they were making love next to a tree and she started to bleed and she was led to bleed on the earth and then I saw her taking one of her eggs to and it got mistranslated or something as it was a chicken's egg but that doesn't even make sense and I asked Jesus today to show me what that was about because how why did they start saying she was had chicken eggs like that doesn't even make sense so what he showed me was that she had the ability to create an egg for if somebody needed new life and again I'm not exactly sure this has just been coming through and I'm trying to make sense of it through my own filters and um, of course I don't I don't have any awareness of what all of this means so bear with me um, but I was shown that she took one of her eggs to his tomb after crucifixion because there was some type of of ritual or something that they did to bring people back from the dead it's like she gave them new life through giving them her egg and i saw something about it also being connected to what they say the blood of christ but that is not exactly coming in 100 percent clear so when it does i'll be sure to share it with all of you but the most important part that he really wants me to share is that there's millions of souls who are walking this earth right now who have been seated with Jesus or Yeshua's consciousness and as you start to wake up you're going to go through stages of awakening and one of the first stages is to feel like you are the only one and this is necessary for you to step fully into your Christ light. And then I keep seeing a field of all of you coming together. And there needs to be a knowing that when others step forward, that it does not take anything away from your Christ light within you. And that it is important for you all to feel like you're the only one, but understand there is only one. We are one. And so there is the twin flame collective consciousness that has come online on this planet right now because it's a resurgence of the Christ consciousness. And all of the many Mary, Mary Magdalene's that are walking this earth who are looking for their counterpart. And so this is just to tell you that you have not gotten it wrong that you are on the right path. Keep doing your inner work. Keep clearing yourself, healing. Remember to balance your healing with your spirituality, your growth, your spiritual growth. Continue to do your um, interpersonal work and really clearing all of your dysfunctional styles of relating. Because as we come together, the more and more you understand that this isn't just another relationship and that you have a divine mission, the quicker that you realize and get on your own mission and unify the masculine and feminine with inside of yourself, the sooner that your divine counterpart will magnetically be drawn to you. But if you continue to wait around from a state of lack of consciousness, hoping that another will complete you, 
you will be repelled from your divine counterpart and some of you may never meet them because of it. So what I'm here to tell you is that there is the, the third wave or whatever you want to call it of twin flames that have yet to meet. They've experienced a catalyst that has brought them the twin flame energy that activated their consciousness to start this purification process. And it's up to us to continue this work, to continue to activate, to continue to remember. Remember that whether you're on the creator's journey of Mary Magdalene or whether you're on the hero's journey of walking Jesus' path, it's about bringing those both together to create the one and understand that you've never been separated from your twin flame. Every thought that you've ever thought, they've heard. Every feeling, you guys have always been connected. And just as Mary went through her own dark night of the soul and called out for her counterpart, she didn't even know she was calling for anyone. She was just calling out for help. And he came. And so the majority of us, because this is to the next octave, our counterpart isn't going to come when we are calling out. Because we are at the evolution of that where we know how to heal ourselves, where we are able to ask for help, and where we don't rely on our divine counterpart to do our healing because that sets the relationship off in an imbalance. And the collective consciousness is at a too dense of a state of um, disempowerment to come together with a twin flame and allow for that healing to happen within them. It just unfortunately, is not where our consciousness is. But it's a beautiful thing that should empower you to know that you have the capabilities to do all of the healing and the journey work before the mission starts. And for those of you that are in separation, you will be put with an ascension partner who is a part of the Twin Flame community. So don't get confused by thinking that this might be another twin flame or you're another divine counterpart. Take it for what it is. It is here because it is allowing for you. Basically, they are going to be your mirrors, just as a twin flame would be. And so everything that you've healed and cleared, they're going to be working on. And everything they've healed and cleared you're going to be working on. And so at first, you may trigger each other. And so the quicker you can come together and realize that this relationship is about you both ascending together, learn from one another, and grow in your love for one another. Because that love is what is needed for ascension. It is that purification process of love to come back to remember what divinity is, what unconditionality is without any martyr or codependency or any of the dysfunctions. So allow for that to happen and embrace your journey. Remember that it's important to not get stuck on the physical form of who you think your counterpart is. Instead, surrender to the fact that you are on a twin flame journey. Just surrender and say that you are willing to accept that journey. The sooner that you do that and stop focusing on a person, that tells the universe that you're you're, you're wanting to walk it out and not wobble anymore. And so you're open to whomever, whatever shape that 
counterpart comes in as because it's about unconditionality. Okay? Also, Jesus is wanting me to speak quickly about um, the whole concept of choosing him. This is because this has nothing to do with you, um, like whatever religious programming is. Um, this is about when you choose to repent for living in only um, ego and you choose Jesus, this allows for the Divine Mother, the Holy Spirit to um, like take ownership of you, to be your comforter. And although it's always there and, and available to you, there's this different energy. There's Throughout the course of my life, I've always asked Jesus because I went through the whole um, trying to rescue too many people that just all, all they wanted to do was use me. And so me and Jesus got into this thing where I would say, do they belong to us? Um, and not that they're ours, but like, have they chosen um, Christ and not just living in their ego? And whether he would say yes or no. Now, at any moment, they could say, I'm choosing to, um, I'm choosing to walk my purpose or I'm choosing Christ and that would shift but um he's just bringing my attention to mention that so that uh you could understand that it's always a choice you always have a choice no matter what you've been through we've all had our stuff and so understand that there is no sin upon this planet that would ever make you not worthy of the love of the divine mother and christ so I hope this message serves you all well. I will leave the link in the description below if you would like to get your own prophetic activation where I will work with your specific template to activate you through my voice and through the information that I receive about your specific um, archetype and tone. So um, I invite you all to experience that activation. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. You guys can reach me at Kendra, Divine Purpose Mentor.com. Be the light that you were born to be.